iOS has seen many updates over the years. A lot of them are very well documented, but some you probably don't even know are there. And unless you really know your way around the operating system and you start digging into every little nook and cranny, they can be tough to spot. The more you play around in iOS, the more that you're going to find, but that can take quite a while and not everything that you're going to find is going to be useful. I think that's why these rarely get brought up at Apple events. They're just not glamorous enough. But on the flip side to that, some of these features are game changers for a lot of folks. For the past week, I've been digging through as many of these things as I can, and I've narrowed it down to 20 hidden or lesser known features that you should probably know about if you're using an iPhone. And frankly, there's a feature or two in here that I think are just really important things to enable right away, and some others that are just going to make your life a lot easier. So with that said, let's get into it. Hey everyone, Kyle Erickson here. iOS is something that is constantly evolving with new features. And let's be honest, reading through release notes every time a new version gets released to keep up with it isn't exactly most people's idea of a good time. Events like WWDC are probably where most people get a sense of what new things are coming to iOS each year, and that's definitely a lot more digestible, but you still end up missing out on some things if that's all you're paying attention to. And beyond that, if you're just not into those events, or maybe you just switched from Android and you're completely new to the iPhone, there can be a lot to learn. I've been taking note of a lot of these things and trying to find features that aren't super obvious to help both new and experienced users. So let's just dive right in and kick things off with one thing that I think is the most important here and something everyone should probably consider enabling on their phone, secure device protection. This is a brand new feature as of iOS 17.3, and there's a good chance that it's not even enabled on your phone. Basically what this does is add some extra steps like face ID or a passcode verification if your phone is trying to access sensitive data from unfamiliar locations, so say if you're away from home or work, things like financial information, Apple ID details, erasing or resetting your phone, that kind of thing will all require you to verify it's you before you make any changes, which prevents anyone else from accessing or changing that data, which is pretty important. To enable that, you're gonna go into settings, go to face ID and passcode, and turn on stolen device protection, and that's all you need to do. With that out of the way, I want to get into some multi-touch and long press functionality that can be extremely helpful, but isn't always obvious, starting with dragging and dropping files between apps. A lot of people don't know this, but if you go to your files or photos app and you hold down on a file or photo until it's loose on the screen, while that's held down, you can navigate outside of that app, go into another one like a messaging app that supports attachments and drop it right inside of there. You can also add more than one file or photo by tapping on others while you're holding one down and it'll just add it to the stack, which is a pretty handy way to move things around sometimes. You can also do a similar thing when you're moving around the icons on your home screen where if you hold down on the screen to enter jiggle mode, instead of just moving one icon at a time, with an icon held down on the screen, I can just click others and move multiple apps at once. While we're going through all these multi-touch features, one common one that I see a lot of folks are unaware of is back in the Photos app, where I can use multi-touch to select a ton of photos really fast. I see this pop up with a lot of people who are trying to move or delete all their photos from their device, where they're just selecting things row by row, scrolling up a little, selecting another row and so on. All you really need to do is select some photos with your finger held down and then you can just scroll all the way to the top or the bottom in a couple of seconds, which can save you a lot of time. Similarly, one thing that a surprising amount of folks don't know about, which I use all the time and is one of the most useful features in iOS, is accessing the hidden trackpad when you're typing something on the keyboard. To do that, all you need to do is hold down on your spacebar and you can move around your text cursor with your finger held down rather than trying to tap before or after the word that you're trying to add or edit. If you do happen to be messaging someone in the Messages app, one thing that you'll notice in iOS 17 this year is you've got this brand new share menu if you tap the plus button beside the text field. The thing that I'd say that most people are going to do here is add photos, and rather than having to go into this menu every single time that you want to add a photo, you can just hold down on the same plus button and your gallery will pop up at the bottom of your screen, which is a little more convenient. Speaking of photos, there are some other things that we can do specifically with the photos themselves that are new in iOS this year. In the Photos app, if you're scrolling through your photos, you'll see this little eye info icon in the bottom tab bar. But when you find one where that changes and has another icon with a sparkle on it, 
That means that we can use visual lookup and you might already know this will tell you info about your pets or landmarks, but it will also give you things like laundry instructions if you take a picture of your clothing tags and recipe ideas if you have pictures of your food, which is pretty cool. You can also use the camera in other apps like notes or messages where if you hold down on the text cursor, similar to how you would if you were copy and pasting something, if you tap autofill, you can actually scan text from a document and it'll insert it into the text field. In the notes app specifically, you can also do this by hitting the little camera icon where you can either copy the text itself or you can scan an entire document. Again, this is just another thing that can save you a lot of time trying to type in everything yourself. When it comes to actually taking photos or videos, the stock camera app is pretty basic and generally just gives you a view of what it can see. But say if you're on a vacation or you just want to make sure that you're taking the best photos or videos that you can, there's a couple of things that we can enable to help. If you head to settings and go to camera, you can add a grid to your viewport. Say if you want to make sure things are centered or use the rule of thirds. I can toggle that on and I can also toggle on a level in here if I want, just to make sure that my image and the horizon in any photos are all going to be straight. Similarly with video, if I want things to look a little more professional, especially if I'm using Apple Log or ProRes, I can lock the white balance so I don't get any color shifting in the middle of my video. And I can do that by going to record video within the same camera settings and toggling lock white balance. Now let's say that you've taken a photo and maybe you want to zoom in on something quick and send it to someone. The most widely known way of doing this is by going to the photo, tapping the edit button and hitting crop and then adjusting it. But there's a much simpler way of doing this. If I just go to the image, I can just pinch to zoom and I'll have a little button in the upper right hand corner and that will just instantly crop to my viewport size. And if I decide that I want to crop into a different aspect ratio, I can hold down on that crop and select a ratio I prefer my image to be in. Those are all great features for creating photos and videos, but one of my favorite things in iOS is on the flip side of that and has to do with consuming media. On some nights that I can't sleep, maybe if I'm overthinking or my brain won't shut off, I like to watch or listen to something on my phone. And the tricky thing is I'll nod off and then somewhere in the back of my mind, I'll be telling myself to turn off whatever's playing on my phone. So that'll cause me to wake up again, but there's actually a sleep timer built right into iOS that I can set so I don't have to worry about that. To set that up, you just go into the clock app and go to timers and set a time limit that you're comfortable with. And then under where timer ends, you can just scroll all the way to the bottom and select stop playing. When I start this timer, if I'm watching Netflix or listening to Spotify, my iPhone will just stop playing any media. So super handy for any of you out there who often like falling asleep with something on. If you prefer to fall asleep to white noise and you just want to leave that on, or you're looking to reduce stress or study or work with it on, there's an option built right into the operating system for that. If you head into settings under accessibility, you can go into audio visual and there's there's a background sounds option that you can go into where you can toggle that on and select from six different types of sound. There's also a couple other neat features within the accessibility area of the settings. If you prefer to have an LED indicator for things like notifications, you can turn on your LED flash for alerts within that same audio and visual section. Also, if you find auto playing GIFs or animations to be annoying while you're using Safari, you can back out to accessibility again and go to motion and toggle off autoplay images and they'll no longer start on their own. Now this next feature I'd say is kind of related to accessibility, but let's say that I have trouble reading things on my phone or I just find it a pain and prefer to listen to things rather than read. If I'm in Safari on a blog post or an article, I can listen to the page right from within here. All I need to do is click this double A icon beside the address bar and hit listen to page and Siri will start reading it out to me. And if I feel like it's reading too slow or too fast, I can adjust the speed. And if I navigate away from the page and come back to it, it'll remember where I left off and have a resume listening option. Sometimes I'll use that in the morning if I find a long article that I want to read, but maybe I'm making coffee or doing something in the kitchen, which can be pretty handy. But one thing that I want to mention just in relation to the web and signing into different platforms, whether that be in Safari or a standalone app is to do with the verification codes. I've covered this feature in another video, but you know when you sign into something on your phone and it sends you a text with a code that you have to enter? I'm sure most of us have got that little pop-up in our keyboard that shows the code from the text or it's automatically just 
gone in for you, but there's a few things in here that people may not know about. First things first, if you want to auto delete the texts that you get from those services after you put them into your app, instead of doing that manually each time, you can go into settings and go to passwords, password options, and under verification codes, turn on cleanup automatically. I'm sure many of you have done that already, but what some of you may not know, especially if you don't use the Apple Mail app on your phone, is that when those verification codes are sent via email, as long as your email is set up via the Apple Mail app, you'll see those codes show up in your keyboard as well. So. You don't have to go into an email app, open the email and find the code. I say this because a lot of us use third-party apps like Outlook or Gmail and that won't work for this. So it's just something to be aware of if you do use those other apps. You've probably noticed that most of what I've been going over in this video, or at least a large portion of it has been adjusted via the settings app in iOS. And sometimes you might wanna explore things a little bit on your own or toggle something on or off without digging through all these menus and Apple has started making that possible with Spotlight Search. I use Spotlight Search probably more than anything else on my phone to find apps or settings where on my home screen, I'll just swipe down from the middle of my screen and you'll get some suggested apps or actions followed by a search bar below them. Right now, if I type in Bluetooth, cellular data, or different focus modes, I can toggle any of them off or on without ever having to go into my settings, which is super handy if you don't know where some of this stuff is located or if you're just new to iOS. There aren't very many toggles included from what I've seen outside of that, but I'd expect that to probably expand and get better in later versions. Finally, the last thing that I wanna mention is somewhat trivial, but I still see a surprising amount of people struggling with at times, and that's with a calculator. Now, interestingly enough, you can just use Spotlight Search to do calculations for you if you just wanna avoid the calculator altogether, but if I go into the calculator app, one common complaint that I see is there's no backspace button or way to correct mistakes. There is a way to do this, but it's not very obvious. If I swipe over the number in either direction, it'll remove the digit on either end that you're swiping from. And I should also mention that if you want a more advanced calculator, you could just turn your phone into landscape mode. I know these are little things, but again, they're not obvious at all. And there's a pretty good chance that a lot of folks don't even know about this stuff. And that goes with many of the features here. A lot of these aren't very sexy and aren't gonna stick out in a keynote or even be included in one, but they can be extremely useful to the right people. And it's always good to know more about the tools that we use. At the end of the day, the iPhone really just is a tool and I hope you guys learned something here today. If there's any features that you guys find to be super helpful that I did mention in this video, please drop those in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video or you found it useful, feel free to give it a like. And if you wanna see more tech related content or organize a global online hide and seek game using satellite images, please subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next upload.